Hello, welcome back to Algebra 1. We're going to continue talking about square roots, but we're going to solve problems that involve square roots with fractions. So I need to teach you a little rule along the way um, before we can do those. And before, I want you to re recall uh, from the last section, or for the last several sections, um, a rule that we uh, used quite a lot, or at least introduced, um, and because the reason I'm introducing it and having you recall it here is because it'll help you remember the next rule. So, for instance, if you have the square root of the number a times the number b, two numbers multiplied together under a radical, that is exactly the same thing as the square root of a times the square root of b. So, for instance, if you have the square root of 3 times 4 in here, in other words, if you had 12, you can write it as 3 times 4, then that'll be the square root of 3 times the square root of 4. So that's something that you can use a lot whenever you're solving problems. So here is a similar rule. So I'll say, uh, uh, here's another rule that's very similar, and it kind of follows from what we've seen from the previous rule. If you have a radical of a fraction, a divided by b, so a fraction that's under the radical, that can be written as the square root of a divided by the square root of b. So the reason I, again, had you recall this one first is because there's a lot of, of parallels between these two things. Basically, if you have two things multiplied together under a radical, you can break it up and have the radical of the first item times the square root of the second item. Now, similarly, a fraction is just division. So whereas this is multiplication under a, 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 a square root, this is division under a square root. And so the same kind of rule applies. You can split it up so that you have the square root of the numerator divided by the square root of the denominator. So these are very similar rules to one another. You should probably file those away uh, because they'll be useful as we solve lots and lots of problems down the road. So let's jump into our first one. What if you were given something like the square root of 121 divided by 25? Right, so that's a fraction, 121 over 25. Now, now that you know this rule, basically it follows this rule here. You have the square root of a over b, where a is 121 and b is 25. So the way that you need to handle this is just split it up. It's going to be the square root of 121. You get that answer, and then you divide that or make a fraction with that over the square root of 25. So now what you have to do is solve two smaller problems. The first one is this one, and then you have this one. So we'll go off to the side, and we will say, what is the square root of 121? Um, now, you may have that memorized, but if you don't, you just make a little tree and you start thinking, what times what is going to give me 121? And you're going to have to fiddle around with it for a while, but eventually you'll realize that 11 times 11 is 121. And you say, well, wait a minute, that's a pair right there. So the answer to this question, the square root of 121, you pull that 11 out, is 11. Because 11 times 11 